Welcome to Write the Damn Book Already. I'm Elizabeth Lyons, and I teach you how to write and publish powerful, thought-provoking nonfiction and memoir without overcomplicating it, overthinking it, or having to go off into no man's land for three months. Listen in each week to learn more and get your hands on all my great free book writing resources at elizabethlyons.com. Hello, hello, and welcome to this next episode of Write the Damn Book Already. I'm Elizabeth Lyons, and I help people write and publish thought-provoking, persuasive, powerful nonfiction and memoir. In this episode, I had the joy and the pleasure of talking with Julie Solomon. Julie's first book, Get What You Want, released just a few weeks ago, and what I there were a lot of things about this uh, conversation that I really enjoyed and appreciated. The truth is that while Julie has built a an enormous business and an enormous following, my very first introduction to her was just a few weeks ago. I was listening to a podcast of Amy Porterfield's, and Julie was Amy's guest. And this struck me for a couple of different reasons. I'm first of all, I love waking up every day and wondering who am I going to find today. And secondly, as I love to remind my clients, it doesn't matter how big or how small you think you or someone else is. There's always somebody new who's never heard of them before. So even if you're feeling really like a small fish in a big pond, first of all, you've got, I mean, just dive into the deep end because there are so many people out there waiting to find you, your book, your perspective, the way that you express your thoughts, the way that you guide people, the way that you uniquely speak your truth. And even if you're a big fish in a big pond, I come upon people with great frequency where I'll say, hey, have you heard of you know this thing by Kevin Hart? Did you see the new movie with Kevin Hart? And they're like, who's Kevin Hart? And I think, for real? <laughs> it doesn't matter how big we think someone is. They're all trying to reach new people as well. So there are different ages and stages of this whole process, but there were a lot of things about Julie's conversation with Amy that I really resonated with and really struck me. And and the the most, the biggest one, and the one that made me say, all right, I want to connect with Julie and I want to ask her if she'll, if she'll come on the show, was when she was discussing the fact that she really historically is not a terribly vulnerable person on social media. She doesn't share a lot of her private life and she doesn't share a lot of her professional challenges and the struggles that she's gone through. And when she decided to write this book, that was something that she really wanted to focus on. She wanted to take people behind the the, the doors of what what's really gone on and what really does go on. And her rationale for that was that when she buys books by other successful people, that's what she wants to hear about. You know, of course she wants to hear about the, the good stuff, but a lot of times the good stuff, if you've been following someone for a long time, you already know all that stuff. You know their process, you know their journey, uh, at least the, the one that's in the public eye. And so lots of times when people buy books by people who they've been following for a long time, the little added extra that they're looking for is, okay, help me believe in me. And they don't even realize that that's what they want, but that's what they want. Because it's so easy for us to look at someone else's success and make up reasons why they have it and we can't. So we look at it and we think, oh, well, they're married to the right person, or they came from money, or they have the right degree or certification, they went to the right school, they have the right friends, they're well connected, they have a slew of nannies and chefs and other people who help them out so they can that frees up their time to, to do what they want to do. We say that. And then when we find out that it's not true and that they go through their own challenges and they've gone through their own moments where they've had to find solutions on the fly, all of a sudden we see ourselves in them. And when we do that, we start to believe differently about our own abilities. And that's the magic of being powerfully vulnerable when you tell your story. And so when I heard Julie say that, I, I thought, I okay, we've, I've got it. So I reached out and by the end of the day, she had responded and, and agreed to come on the show. So I absolutely love talking to her about her book, Get What You Want, and her thought process on the journey, the journey of writing a book, the journey of writing it vulnerably, the uh, the journey of building her businesses, all of those different things, and really just trying to get to the heart of, um, of what she helps other people get to the heart of 
all of her her clients and her people and her followers who are looking for a level of guidance and a specific type of guidance that she provides. So without talking any further about any of this, I give you my interview with Julie Solomon. Well, so I love this. This is fantastic. Thank you. Thank and, you. Um, I, know that, I'm excited. I know that you know a lot about books. I know that you read a lot of books. I know that you write a lot. So coming from you, I really appreciate that. Oh, you're sweet. You're sweet. Well, it, no, it's great. And as I mentioned to you when I messaged you, I was like elated. Like I felt an instant connection with you because of what you said to Amy Porterfield mm -hmm. about how much you just wanted to be like bear it in a powerful way. But you and I, oh my God, I just live for it because it's, it's so important. You, you took the words out of my mouth when you said um, you want to be able to see yourself in mm. another person. And like we look at people all the time and we look at the success that they've reached and acquired and we're like, but they're different because. Mm -hmm. And we do that, right? So I have a couple questions. I've of course outlined like it, the whole book is highlight. This is what I do. It's dog-eared, underlined, highlighted, the whole night. But my first question for you is, I love this because in the prologue, you actually said, here's the truth. I've never written a book. I was never taught how to write a book. I'm the absolute worst at grammar. And I don't know the first thing about editing. But I do know what it's like to have the desire to share your story. I do know the impact of seeing yourself in someone else that goes beyond a curated Instagram picture. I do know what it feels like to want more from a leader you admire than the generalized just be yourself statements. If it were this easy, this book wouldn't exist. Like that sums it up. It doesn't sum up the whole book, but that's why books are so powerful. Yeah. So my question is with all of that, like, and the work, I hear that all the time. I'm the worst at grammar. I'm not a writer. I, I don't even know the first thing about this. So what was it that made you think, I want to do this in book form anyway? Yeah, you know, Elizabeth, I think you bring up a great, a great point. The, the first thing that I want to say is that, you know, accolades are, are no accolades. When you meet someone, you don't go up to them and be like, oh my gosh, you're a best-selling author, or oh my gosh, you've won seven Grammys, or oh my gosh, you have this. But you do say, your book changed my life. You created a course that taught me something about myself that I never knew was possible. I listened to one of your songs and it moved me to the core. And so I think that the more that we can focus on the impact that we're creating and less on keeping score, <laughs> The, the more that the authenticity can come through. Hallelujah. So I want to, I just want to say that first for anyone who, and, and it, that kind of lends to what you were just talking about of like, I didn't go to book writing college. <laughs> I don't think that there Me is. Me either. Right. I don't think that there's like book university. Um, and, and I feel like a lot of us, we love to go to battle for our excuses. We will go to war for mm. our excuses. It's like we say that we want to get all these things, but there's always that but, and then we'll have a list of excuses as to why we can never get what we want in life. And so I think that that is, you know, writing a book and we'll use that medium as, as a great example of, yes, I could have the excuse of like, well, I don't know the first thing about editors. Well, that's why our editing, well, that's why there's editors, Julie. I don't know the first thing, you know, I'm horrible at grammar. Well, that's why you're gonna have copy editors that come in that are great at grammar to support you. And I think more than anything, uh, creating a book, writing a book, bringing a book out to the world is a team sport. It is not some thing that you're gonna do in the corner by yourself. Yes, you may write it initially by yourself. And I think that a lot of that I actually love to create in isolation. I love to kind of like get in my writing cave and do that. But I also realize that you are only as strong as your ask and in creating anything and launching anything really is a team sport. And so the more that you give yourself that permission, the better off that you're going to be as to not having to, to you know, just go to death for your, for your excuses. And such a great point because I think too, having that team around you, that is so helpful as create when we're creative people. And I think people underestimate the number of creative people who are also successful, who are very introverted. Like I'm an introvert. I like to just go into my hole and create, 
But when it does come time to put anything out into the world, whether it's a book, a course, a shoe, like whatever, to have people around you who can continue to support you and remind you that like what you've done is of value, it's an added bonus. It's an added benefit. Right. You know? And, but it, and that kind of goes back to that accolade piece. I think that it's so, you know, we get we can get so lost in the, you know, and I talk about this in the book, your why. I, I think getting so clear on why you want to do whatever it is that you want to do so there's a deeper purpose and impact behind it. You know, mm -hmm. do you want to write a book just so you can say that you wrote a book or do you want to write a book because you really have something to say and you and it's important for you to get that out into the world now. And I think that that's to me, that's even a distinction between books that I really connect with and love reading versus books that I'm like, eh, well. You can tell the difference. You can. You know, and that's not meant to, it's hard for me to disparage anything that's been written, but the fact of the matter is you can tell the difference. And on the flip side, yes, there are people who just want to read a book that says, do this, 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 have a good day. Like they want the 50, I don't consider that a book. It's a pamphlet in my world, but like they want the pamphlet that says, do this, this, and this, but I don't, I, that's just not my world. And to your point that you had mentioned on Amy's podcast, like that's not really what you enjoy consuming. It's not what I enjoy consuming, so it's not what I write. It's not what you enjoy consuming, so it's not what you wrote. Um, so why now, right? Because I think this is always interesting, especially when people have had a, hit a certain level of success. It's like, you always can come up with a reason to do it now, and you could also come up with a reason to say, well, maybe I should wait until, fill in the blank. Mm -hmm. So why now for this one? Yeah, I, I mean, again, I really do feel like people will write a book once they have something to say, and, and, and that need to say something is greater than any excuse that they would have for it. And so it was, it was my time to do that. I also knew that I've always wanted to write a book. You know, yeah. I, it's so funny how someone will be like, I never thought I would write a book, <laughs> but here I am. You know, and it's <laughs> really like, you really think you would never write a book? Right. Did it really never cross your mind? Yeah. Right. And so I always wanted to write a book. I've always been, you know, I've always had a love for books. I've always, I've been able to transport my, my life and my feelings. There's been so many books that have inspired me and changed my life. And, you know, I'm a communicator at heart. It's, it's my medium of how I, you know, give back to the world. So yeah. to me, it felt natural to have, you know, I, I podcast and I speak and I have courses and I coach women to build their own personal brands. And so a book for me was just an, another avenue to con for that continuation. But I also think that it's about getting clear on why. Why was now the time for me? And it was because I felt that, you know, I actually, Elizabeth, got the opportunity to write a proposal back in 2018. Mm -hmm. and journey way back then. And I did decide to go the traditional publishing route, which that's a whole other conversation. Of course, which but, I'd love to have with you one day, by the way, but carry on. Yes. But I, it took because of the pandemic and because, you know, I had a child two years ago, there were personal things that were happening. And then there were just things that were happening in the landscape that it took several years mm -hmm. for it to finally come out. And I think that that in some ways was like a divine intervention. I don't think this book would have hit the same if it would have come out a year ago, two years ago, three years ago. I feel like people are so disconnected and so disembodied from their desires, yeah. their belief in what's possible, their dreams, their, their own self-worth, that they're even worthy to want more. They're worthy to want what it is that they want and not feel shame around that. And I think that we feel that more now than we ever have coming out of the pandemic or to the other side of, I should say. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And so, you know, it just, it feels like the right moment, you know, to go, how do, how do we go from unseen to unstoppable? And how do we not let external circumstances, no matter what they be, yes, we may not be con able to control what happens to us, either individually or globally, but we can change how we respond or react to it. And so that's why I feel like it was, the time was now. I also know that I'm just getting started. Um, I think just because someone is a really good marketer does not mean that they are a really good writer or that they even care to be an author. And to me, I, I am an author. I'm a writer. This is not going to be my only book. I'm not doing this just to check it off the box and like move on to the next thing. Right. This is going to be 
one of the ways in which I share my heart with the world and, and I communicate with people for the rest of my life. And I think that that's the other thing with that excuses piece. If you want to be a writer, then write. <laughs> Well, and people say all the time, I'm not a writer. And yet I see how prolific they are on social media. Like they're writing emails, they're writing Facebook posts, they're writing Instagram posts, captions. And I'm like, you are, you're yeah. already doing it. You right. just have a thought in your head that says a real writer looks like this. Right. I don't look. So you have this line in here that I, 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 um, I boxed it. Like I put like a box, you know, around it and I dog eared the page. It was that good. Now this is like, not, it's the way you said it. And this is where I think books create such a uh, crazy, uh, crazy impact, like crazy good impact. You said people pleasing in order to connect with others is like chewing gum to satisfy your hunger. I've never heard that before. I don't know if that's original to you or if you heard it from somewhere else and it doesn't matter because I will always attribute it to you. Like mm -hmm. I've never heard it said that before, said it that way before. Yeah. But it really made me stop and think because I'm a total recovering people pleaser. Mm -hmm. So what's your experience? You know, can we relate that for a second with a story you told about when your podcast came out mm -hmm. and someone messaged you and was a little upset mm -hmm. that you had in them and you you don't have to go into it's a great story and it's all in the book so everybody just could just get the damn book but i thought that was really impactful because when we're starting businesses things like that are it's kind of inevitable and i love the way you reframed it yeah yeah so i, I share a story in the book about how when i was first starting out and growing my business um my podcast started to gain a lot of traction which traction in general and at, at that time in my career had never happened i've always been the turtle in the race i've never been someone that just you know and I, I talk a lot about that my origin story of like growing up and you know i never really felt like i belonged and i was always kind of on the outside looking in always wanted to be a part of the in but never felt that i was worthy to, to be that and when i thought that i'd gotten to the other side of that through therapy and doing a lot of work i had my podcast come out it was gaining a lot of traction and there was a female podcaster that I had put up on a, pe a pedestal. At the time when my podcast came out, there were very few women that were out there doing that. And, um, and I looked up to, to you know, the few ones that were. And so when I finally got the courage, because it took me about a year to actually, I'd been wanting to create a podcast for over a year, and I just did not have the courage or confidence to do it. And I finally just said, I'm going to do it. And I put her name along with a few other of the female podcasters I put their name in my description just as a nod to inspiration. And a couple of weeks later, I get this email in my inbox and it's from this woman. And I go into this fantasy mode of like, oh my gosh, maybe she wants to be friends. Maybe she, you know, and it's, it's, it's hitting that, that belonging trigger of mine of like, oh my gosh, I'm finally being seen. I'm finally being accepted. I'm finally being validated by this person. And this is, I kind of, that old saying of like, never meet your heroes kind of thing. Um, and so I opened the inbox and in my mind, I have this fantasy of maybe she wants to be friends. Maybe she'll come on my podcast. Maybe she's asking me to come on hers and the emails in there, you know, and it's the far antithesis of that. And she, she told me that I made her cringe, that she thought I was trying to write her coattails. And it was a lot of just this, you know, heaviness of like all of these feelings of, I don't belong. I'm not enough kind of being thrown into my face. And I say in the book, and I truly do mean that. Mean this. This does not mean that that makes that woman a bad person for kind of, from my perspective, coming at me in that way. I think that we all see the world from our own lens. But what it gave me was this really amazing gift of we have to we have to really understand that the self love and acceptance and validation has to begin with us. Mm -hmm. And the more that we put that onto other people, or the more that it's contingent upon somebody else saying yes, you're good enough. The, the the more and more that we're going to need it and then the more and more that we're going to be let down when human beings are just human beings and they show us who they really are which are not which are just imperfect people it doesn't make them bad people it's just imperfect people and i think that that was my part to play in it is that i had put this woman on a pedestal and i had made her so much bigger and so much godlike you know mm -hmm. i basically made a human being this like super person and so when she 
said what she said, it was so disheartening and so heartbreaking because now it's like, oh my gosh, you're not who I made up and told myself you were. How dare you? Yeah. <laughs> really, you know, I needed to start to look at myself. And so that's why I told that story. That's why I even put the email on there because I do think mm -hmm. that there's a lot of layers to that of, you know, why do we put other people on pedestals? Why is our validation contingent on other people validating us and, and saying that we're worthy? Um, you know, why do we have to wait to be told by other people that our podcast, our work is good before we actually think that it's good. And so there's just, there's a lot to that story that I, I thought was important to share because I do know that it's, it's relatable and it can happen. And no matter where you're at in business, like there's no perfect day, you know, it doesn't end one day and you're like, okay, everything's great. We're done. I'm, we're done. I'm totally validated. Everybody like, it would be insane to think that everyone is going to accept you and validate you and, and, you know, tell you your work is amazing. Because you don't feel that way about, I mean, I have people that I really like as people and I don't necessarily love their book or love the sock and shoe combination. Like, you know, it's, it. so when we seek that from the outside and we don't get really clear, and that's why I love the reframe that you have in the book about how if it happened today, your response, would have been wildly different in the sense that you would have had like a, a, a grounding point within you. Yeah. You didn't receive it. Cause I, most of us, we've been there where you get an email like that and it's like your heart, just everything drops out of your body. Yeah. Um, where it's like, Oh my God, what have I done? Right. And so to be able to recognize, like, I didn't, I didn't do anything. I had the best, it's also intentions, right? You, you had the best of intentions. You weren't intending right. to do how it was perceived. So I love that. And I'm so, everyone just grab, grab a copy or seven. It's so good. Um, and beyond the book, like your, everything you've curated, Julie, is, I don't want to use cliche, like amazing, incredible, whatever, but it really was just so lovely to go and check out. You've just, you've got a new website out. It's gorgeous. Your vibe, like your whole vibe, your, the energy, it's all consistent. It's all consistent in here. Like if I find you here, if I find you on your website, if I find you on social media, and if I find you in Starbucks, I know I'm getting the same person. And I love that so much. Yeah. Um, what's the best place and way for everybody to connect with you? Yes. So um, I would first say with the book, you can get this wherever you love to buy books. Um, there's also an audio book. I do narrate the audio book. It's only four and a half hours long. So you can get through it really fast, especially if you speed it up, which is what I do with audio books. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But I would recommend to get the book because I have basically what I call a study guide at the at pretty much the end of every chapter yeah. where you really use this as like a journaling practice and real there's a lot of reflective questions and just great, great actionable steps. I share a lot about a method and this is not just a business book. I mean, I, I started out talking about a lot of, you know, just deeper things that really hold us back, especially for women that I see, not all women, but most women when it comes to comparison and people pleasing and control and perfectionism and yeah. boundaries and so much of that that hold us back. And then we, once we can get to the other side of that or really start to see our part to play in that, can we then take action? And so I would say for anybody who feels like they can't get what they want or that getting what they want is impossible, or maybe you're even somebody who's like, I kind of have a lot of what I want. Like, I love my job. I love my family. You know, I have, I'm, I'm healthy, but you know that there's a next level, you yeah. know, step and, and you don't really know how you're maybe self-sabotaging or, or keeping yourself from getting there. That's, that's really where I think I was at when I really felt called to, to write the book that on paper, I kind of had a lot of what I wanted, but then I started to feel shame around like, why am I not content? Why isn't this enough? And it's because there was this, this thing in me that wanted to expand to a next level. And so I started to create new practices and new methods and, and really started to get clear on what is the story that I'm telling myself as to why I think this is bad or wrong to think. And um, I share a lot of that in the book. So that's who I would say really the book is for, what you can learn from it. Um, I do have a podcast called The Influencer Podcast. Wherever you love to listen to podcasts, we have a new episode come out every Wednesday. And then my website is juliesolomon.net. And then of course you can find me here on Instagram. I can't thank you enough.
for making the time and and for chatting and sharing your just sharing this like sharing you thank you for sharing you and for um making it clear that we all like you said we all have bad days we all have moments we all have things that we have to figure out and we're all super capable yes going to that next level if we choose to do that so yeah. i look forward to continuing to get to know you and following all all of all that is you and thank you thank you elizabeth for just caring enough about your the work that you do because it's so important and your incredible community and taking the time to 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 read messages that inspire you because you know that it's going to potentially have an impact not only on your life and my life, but the life of the people that are that are sitting here right now. And I think that that's the most important piece to this is is the the courage for you to show up and to do this with your spark and your light and just being unbashedly who you are and wanting to share that gift with the world. So that's just a reflection oh. back to you. You're, you're Thank you for, for that, which is why we're talking right now. Thanks so much for joining us. I hope you got as much out of that episode as I did. Be sure to follow Julie. I've put all of the links to follow her, her website, her book, her podcast, her social media handles, etc., in the show notes. If you've enjoyed this episode and any others, I would be so grateful if you would like, subscribe, share, and review so we can continue to spread the word. And if you'd like to check out all of my free downloadable resources and guides for writing and publishing an impactful nonfiction book or memoir, you can check out my website, elizabethlyons.com, or follow me. I'm primarily on Instagram at Elizabeth Lyons Author. I'll see you all in the next episode. <laughs>